Okay, everybody, let's uh, let's get going. So I want to continue to um, sort of reinforce the general idea that we can keep reusing these ideas of ours, right? These little mini definitions that do things. Um, so what I want you guys to do at this stage is to take the rotation of these panels and I want you to add an attractor point to it so that you know where it's where it's uh, closest to the point it's either you know more open or less open depending on how you set up your your line so in order to accomplish that um, we have um, let's take a look at this in plan view actually so if we look at it in plan view, we're kind of looking at it as if it's like a facade thing. And it already kind of looks like, actually, I don't think that's really accurate. Let's, let's look at it more like, uh, more like this. Okay. Um, we'll look at it in both. Um, so what we need to do with the attractor point is create a list of varying magnitudes of rotational um, degrees. You guys get that, right? And it's all going to be measured off of its distance to one of these points. Um, so I'm going to create an attractor point. I'll put it over here for now. Um, and um, where are we going? And I, I already kind of gave you a hint because I'm right here. So where are we going to um, insert this new list of numbers? Anybody? Where are we going to insert this new list of numbers that we're going to rotate these panels by so that they're not all rotating by the same value? Hmm? Yeah, on rotate, right? Because it's going to be this value. So right now it's a static degrees of 64 degrees. Um, but we're going to set a domain of rotational values that it's going to spread to and from. Um, so let me separate this a little bit and give myself some room to work. I'm going to move this down here um, and ungroup this. We're going to basically replace this. Um, so when we're working with attractor points, we needed which tool? Yeah, we do need a point. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We got a point here, so I'm going to say one point, put it here, and I'm going to call this a tractor point. Close. Yeah. So this is our tractor point. We're going to test, you know, distance from this to a bunch of points. Um, we can use center points of the cell. Um, so let's go to uh, surface and analysis, and we're going to grab area. And the cells are all the way back here, so I can just plug that in here from faces. Okay, so now the center points of the cells are showing up in there. And it's okay that they're not exactly on the surfaces. Um, that's primarily because, like, when you do something like this, it's kind of a pro I mean, it's exact, but it's approximated distances anyway because. Like, it's all subjective which point you use to, to measure um, and remap. So we've got our attractor points. We have our center points. What else do we need? Closest point. Huh? Closest point. Yes, closest point. So under uh, vector point, or where was it? Curve? Where was closest point? I always forget. Point and surface. Vector point. Vector point. There it is, closest point. Um, so closest point is going to ask us for the point singular to search from. Then it's going to ask us for the cloud of points to search. And whenever I do this one, I try to remember that the, the plurality of those terms is actually reversed. Um, I, I mean, you could sort of do it the other way anyway. But um, So this is going to be our cloud. The singular point is going to be our cloud of points. And the list of points is going to be our singular point. I know I confuse the hell out of you with that, but it's just something a little funny that I, I, I find works a little better. So um, that gives us a list of values. That list of values looks like this. So what do I need to do to it? Opposite. 
Flatten, yeah. OK, so because this is grafted, it's going to run the distance operation on each one individually. And so when I remap it, it's just going to stay the same number. Or you know, it's not going to remap because you need multiple number, numbers for it. So uh, this needs to be flattened. And uh, we're going to then need to do the remapping. So um, let's go to math domain. We're going to need two things out of here. Who remembers what they are? Yes. Um, well, not yet. Um, no. Bounds, yes. And? <laughs> Remap, yeah. All right, so we're going to measure with bounds the, the highest value and the lowest value of that list, which is reading... Um, from 16 to 47. All right, now here's the critical question, right? What do we want to remap to? Because we have the values that we want to remap, which are the distances. We have the uh, source domain, which is 16 to 47. And we're going to create another domain with construct domain. I'll put it kind of up here to keep it out of the way. So we're going to construct a domain but what do we want our minimum and maximum values to be? It's a trick question. Because we get to decide what we want it to be. There is no right or wrong answer. Well, there kind of is. Um, but basically, like if I have this um, plane, and it's triangulated, and I have this point rotating around that point, Right? I, I can have it rotate 180 degrees so that it literally goes from here to there. Right? That's 180 degrees. But maybe I don't want it to go 180 degrees and completely collapse over top of itself. Maybe I only want it to go 90 degrees. So that at maximum it's perpendicular to the facade. So, um, or maybe I only, I only want it to go 30 degrees. Um, so here's, I think, um, something that is helpful. Um, sometimes it's helpful to know, you know, like if you want static numbers or if you want dynamic numbers. So static meaning I've got a zero. So my low value is always going to be zero, meaning it w like the, there will always be one panel on this uh, surface that is fully closed, right? And I could do a static number on the other side that says 90, or maybe I'm not sure. Maybe I want to play around with whether or not it's uh, 60 or 90 or 30. So I could just say 0 to, eh, let's call it 120 even. We'll plug that in. So let's start off with a value of 30 and see what that looks like. So now um, I still need my radians, but I've got this list of remap numbers that are now anywhere from 0 to 30. So when I plug that into radians instead, whoa. Oh, that's right. These aren't, uh, ha. I forgot that I had flattened this. So now this is reading as one list, and it's rotating everything um, 12 times. Um, so every single one of these iterations has, has 12 iterations, and it's messing up the definition. So I actually need to graft that. So let's go to set tree. Well, we could just graft this. Boom. There you go. Okay. So here's what the definition did. This first panel is completely closed right here, the one that's closest to my attractor point. The farthest one is the most open. That's this one. Um, so it gives me kind of some openness, but not a lot. It's more closed down in this corner. It's a little more open in that corner. But as I increase the domain, you're going to see that this uh, bottom left one will remain closed and the degree to which the one on the opposite side is open will increase. You guys see that? So if you look at it from the side, you might get a better sense of what's happening. So it was at 30. Now we're opening it up more on the opposite side. Yeah, exactly. 
So um, what questions do you have before I give us another little break and then we jump into some other things? Yeah. Yes, I will troubleshoot with you. Um, let me just uh, point out that the additive information that we put in here is this right here. So this is all we did for the rotation. Yep, just plugged it right into radiance. 